Mm. It's the third or fourth time I've worn this shirt. Is it Friday already? Damn. May as well get to it. This week I'm taking a look at the latest from Don Coscarelli, John Dies at the End, adapted from a novel by David Wong. But first, the hotness. If you haven't been losing your shit over the Red Wedding on Game of Thrones, then chances are you've been losing your shit over the first trailer for the upcoming sequel to Machete, Machete Kills. Um, I really don't know how Robert Rodriguez gets away with making the movies that he does. He somehow seems to find all the money that he needs to make these utterly ridiculous, cheesy B-movies. And in the process, he pulls together this most unlikely cast of players that, that the world has ever seen. Uh, the first movie had Don Johnson and Steven Seagal in it, and he got great performances out of both of them. I was actually hoping to see more of Don Johnson. You know, when was the last time I saw Don Johnson in anything? But, um... This time around, we get Lady Gaga, and we get Mel Gibson, and we get Charlie Sheen. Excuse me, Carlos Estevez. Um, the trailer's really short, runs a little over a minute, um, and beyond a bunch of explosions and Sofia Vergara in a machine gun bra, there's not a whole lot else to go on, but really, what else do you need? My only hope for the movie is that they don't fall back on lazy jokes with a guy like Charlie Sheen playing the president, uh, that there aren't any jokes about winning or tiger blood in there, because honestly, a couple of years late on that shit. Uh, next up is Dracula, though. Um, I don't have cable anymore, so I'm a little out of touch with what's on TV. I guess there's a little bit of horror to be seen these days. Uh, there's a show uh, about the Bates Motel, I'm told, and it looks kind of shitty. And there's a show about Hannibal Lecter, which also looks kind of shitty, but friends of mine assure me that it's actually really good. But NBC has just rolled out a trailer for their upcoming limited series, that it only runs about 10 episodes, uh, based on Bram Stoker's Dracula. Uh, the series stars Jonathan Rhys Myers, you might know from the tutors of Velvet Goldmine, and uh, he plays the titular vampire. Uh, it takes place in a sort of vaguely steampunky Victorian England, uh, where they've almost kind of taken some uh, characteristics and personality traits from Nikola Tesla and rolled them into Dracula. It looks like a really, really big production. I mean, it looks like a very expensive show, and it's coming to you from the people who brought you Carnival on HBO, and that, my friends, is a really, really good thing. This is a very sexy-looking trailer. John Dies at the End has been on my radar since um, it was originally a sort of serialized novel on the Internet, but because I can't be bothered to sit uh, and devote the time necessary to read an entire novel while staring at my computer, screen. Um, I sort of put it off and promptly forgot about it. That is until my friend Chris suggested that I cut the shit and just get down to it and read the fucking thing. Uh, and I'm glad that I did. See, because I have this personal habit of having to read the books that upcoming movies are adapted from uh, before I actually sit down and watch the movie. I just like to know what I'm getting into. It turns out what I was getting into is this. John and David are paranormal investigators, for lack of a better term. Uh, accidental exposure to a drug they call soy sauce has enabled them to see beyond what we normal people can see. And usually that means uh, Lovecraftian monsters that look like penises. Uh, David recounts his tale to uh, a reporter who's tracked him down on the internet. Uh, and uh, the story is about accidental exposure to soy sauce, which leads him down a path that is littered with dead bodies and cosmic monsters. And for a while, it looks like John has died and is guiding David through uh, various perils through a uh, bratwurst held to his ear like a telephone. Uh, but eventually, David becomes uh, captured by an agent of the soy sauce named Shitload, uh, who requires David John and a girl with a missing hand uh, who can open up a door to another dimension that houses an ancient, formless being named Korok, uh, who's just itching to cross over into our world to consume us all. John Dies at the End was originally written by David Wong, which is a pseudonym for a writer at Crack.com, and unsurprisingly, for a writer who writes listicles for a website 
Uh, the novel reads like it was written by someone who spends uh, a lot of time online. As a matter of fact, it sort of comes off like fiction written by the collective idiots at uh, 4chan's B forum. And it's worth noting, because until the very end of the, no of the movie, it sticks very, very close to the, the source material. And that's kind of amazing in that John Dies at the End is very, very strange. And it's not just the f monster made out of a mountain of frozen meat or uh, a mustache that detaches itself from its host to attack David. Uh, there's, there's a series of um, points where David jumps out of time in order to affect a series of seemingly unconnected events at other points in time in order to save himself in the present. It's actually pretty clever, uh, if not completely fucking disgusting. And um, it, there's also a strong characteristic that ought to uh, appeal to fans of Kevin Smith's movies. Uh, or like Shaun of the Dead, in that there's a very, it relies very heavily on a mind of the same sort of slacker, smart-ass humor that by this point almost seems like an artifact of the 90s. Conversely, John Dies at the End doesn't make a whole lot of sense, and I make the controversial argument that unless you're familiar with the source material, which fills in a lot of the, the gaps and aids the viewer, you're gonna be hopelessly lost. Uh, the novel really reads like two or three short stories crammed into uh, one novel, and uh, the movie's actually pretty good about combining all of the essential elements to make one movie out of all that crazy shit. But at the same time, it leaves out a lot of the details uh, that flesh out the picture to make it more than what seems like uh, a single horror movie comprised mostly of dick jokes. Don Coscarelli, who is responsible for some of my favorite horror movies of all time, like Phantasm and Baba Hotep, brings his signature style to the proceedings. Um, I've always felt like Don is a long-lost cousin to Sam Raimi, the difference being that Don manages to keep his tendencies toward the slapstick firmly in check. Uh, John Dies at the End is, in fact, gleefully disgusting, with some dismemberment and some exploding heads, but it never really feels like it's running wild, like uh, horror comedies from less masterful directors tend to be. Uh, you walk a tightrope when you make a horror comedy. And uh, I'm pleased to say that Coscarelli, who at one time I was worried would be consumed by endless phantasm sequels, um, has broken the cycle and uh, is showing everybody now that he's capable of playing in the horror movie big leagues. John Dies at the End is a bit of a muddled mess in terms of story. It's an inherently weird tale that doesn't necessarily work as a narrative. Uh, it's really more like H.P. Lovecraft by way of Kevin Smith. And that's fine if you're tuned for that kind of movie. Um, on the flip side, it's that same weirdness that makes it so much fun to watch. Um, David Wong's style is so visual that even while you're reading the novel, it seems like it would make a great movie. Um, and uh, it's almost as though it was written uh, with the ultimate intention of being a movie. Uh, so it's got that going for it. I mean, the worst part of it all is all the stuff they had to cut out in order to keep it in the feature film running time range. Uh, it's fun, and it's gory, uh, and even though it feels really disjointed to fans of the novel, uh, it's a worthwhile investment in your time. Don Coscarelli, John Dies at the End, two great tastes that taste great together. Uh, as always, like, comment, subscribe, and for the love of God, share, share, share. Uh, I'll see you next Friday with more unsolicited opinion. In the meantime, stay out of Malibu Lebowski.